And now, he has a chance to make things right. To train the true Dragon Warrior. And he's stuck with you. A big, fat panda who treats it like a joke. <laughs> oh, that is it! That's right, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Dealing with the Vigilant Christian's Nonsense, where we talk about God's favoritism and how it's not due to him loving someone more, but because, you know, fuck, why not have favorites? Take it away, Mario. Hey, everyone. I pray you're having a great day. I don't know about you, but it is excruciatingly hot uh, where I am. I'm in Canada. You probably also are experiencing uh, a massive heat wave, so stay hydrated and healthy uh, and cool. My brothers and sisters, it's really hot. It's like hot as balls here. It's so fucking hot. I'm fucking hot in this fucking blaze. But it's Canada Day, so what's up, my Canadian brothers and sisters? Happy Canada Day. Uh, may God continue to keep our land glorious and free. And I know that... Um, we got Trudeau in charge, we got all sorts of problems, but let us be grateful today that uh, for now, I can still preach the gospel and I'm not in jail. Why did you bring up jail? Are you, are you going to jail because you killed someone? Was it a gay person? Are you angry at the gays that you killed them? Well, okay, sorry I asked. And I'm in Canada, so thank you, Jesus. Uh, wanted to just jump on quick. Uh, I cut myself shaving. You missed quite a bit. What happened to the clean-shaven Mario I used to know? Are you trying to look more manly? Sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Whatever. Um, here to uh, talk about something that I, 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 I bet you it's going to be controversial. Oh, yeah, because that's real new for you. It's not going to be controversial because it's not biblical or not true. It's going to be controversial because some of you are going to misunderstand what I'm saying here. Are you sure that's why? Like, really sure? Now, the title, uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to title it, but it's going to be something along the lines of God having favorites. So are you saying that God loves people more than others? Now, immediately, some, are, some of you are going to think that I'm saying that God loves some of us more than others. Wow, you're good. It's almost like you could read my mind. Get out of my head! Get out of my head! And that's not true. But God does favor. So he shows favoritism towards them, but he doesn't love them more. So when he flooded the entire world killing a bunch of people, he did that because he loved them? There's a biblical concept called the favor of God, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. And the story that illustrates that God will favor some of his sons over others is the story of Joseph and his brothers. So if you know Joseph and the story of the technicolored uh, rain coat jacket, whatever. Yeah, because they had raincoats back then and all. It's funny how I know your Bible better than you do. You ever heard that expression? It comes from this story. So the story of Joseph was, uh, he was the youngest brother in, in- Wrong. He was the second youngest. He had one other brother that was younger than him, and they were both by Jacob's favorite wife, Rachel. And back in the day, this was not the one to receive the blessing and to be uh, chosen uh, to be the real leader. And God did something unique. He actually chose Joseph. And uh, his father, Jacob, was very proud of this. He was happy because uh, uh, Joseph had revealed that God had spoken to him and showed him amazing things. And, and obviously, Jacob was very proud and uh, was happy to see that one of his uh, sons was highly anointed. This is the verse in the Bible where he tells his dad about his dreams, which will be Genesis chapter 37, verse 10. Now, here he says he rebuked him, meaning that he disagreed with it so what part of that is being proud when we're talking about god's favor it's just a higher anointing it's a higher favor because look okay J jacob had how many boys okay i think is it 12 including jacob or 12 plus jacob you're a terrible teacher you're supposed to be teaching us this not the other way around 
I think it's 12 including, either way. Um, all of, out of all of them, one of them was chosen to have a higher level of God's favor. Now, is it because Jacob was worthy of that, deserving of that, better than his brothers? No. If it isn't because God loved him more, and it isn't because he was better than his other brothers, how, exactly why did this happen? Uh, this fundamentally shows us the sovereignty of God. Sovereignty? Sounds more like randomness. So, why does he do it? God bestows favor just because he's God and he does. And... So, because he's God and don't question it. Got it. Now, I do believe there's a way, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it at the end here, that we can get a little bit more of God's blessing and favor in our life through obedience as good children, of course. But in general, God just decides, you know, hey, Jacob, that's my boy. He's going to be the one that I'm going to use. I'm going to favor. Whoa, I thought we were working with Joseph. Are we, are we switching to Jacob, or did you just forget which one was which? Nah, I'm sure you got this. Uh, David, another one in the Bible that was favored highly by God. And why was it? Because God recognized he was a man after God's heart. So God favored him in choosing him to be a king. It pleased God to choose David. Oh yeah, I'm definitely sure that's what was going on there. And so it's not a very popular thing for Christians to talk about, uh, but it is biblical. And what I would love to encourage you here today is that um, you begin to study about God's favor. It's a really interesting biblical topic. I don't think it's as interesting as you think it is. Um, we want to have God's favor. Oh yeah, I totally do. Um, but again, as I said, it's just, it's bestowed and a lot of it has to do with the sovereignty of God. Now there is an element, I believe, that we can get a little bit more of God's favor by spending more time with him. Uh, Wait, we can spend time with him? Because, you know, my heavenly father left for a pack of smokes before I was born and never came back. It's like any relationship with your mom and dad, right? If mm, not exactly. If you spend a lot of time with your dad, he's going to favor you. He's going to have a deeper relationship with you. And, and it's the same with God, because when we draw near to him, he draws near to us. So that drawing close will also draw his favor to us. I mean, not necessarily. He favored Moses, and God was going to smite him and kill him, but Moses' wife stopped him, and that's why now we have no foreskin. And his blessing to us, as we draw further away, his favor and his blessing leave, but that's on us. Uh, he's, uh, he's just waiting for us to pursue and to seek him, and you know he never forces himself upon us. He's Wait, what did you say? He never forces himself upon us. He's, 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 okay. Um, so I don't know. I just wanted to kind of rant and I felt led by the spirit to discuss that. I'm not sure why. I know why. Because my God speaks to me in mysterious ways. I'm sure some of you uh, may be blessed by this. Um, another element of this that I experienced, uh, and maybe you are like a Jacob, uh, I'm, I have a favor. God has favored me and he's anointed me. Of course he has, little fella. You're just as special as you want to be. And what happens is when I go into churches sometimes, and I've seen this happen, now thank God it's not happening where I'm at, but I've had a history of this. I think it's safe to say that you probably had a history of being a dick and they didn't want you there anymore like no one wanted you there anymore where other brothers because of the fact that i have an anointing that may be perceived as larger it's, say I'm cocky and I say what? it's not really we're all called and gifted according to the calling and we're all judged according to how much we're given to how much we live it's not that but i have a feeling that it's not that but it's that some brothers, because oftentimes the pastor will be like, oh, okay, Mario's got some gifting. I want to get him into the leadership. I want to do this. Oh, so are you going to give us like a example? No, no, you're not. And other brothers will look at me and be like, mm. they're like, the, it's like looking at Jacob there. You had all 12 brothers like, mm, I don't like this. Dear. I'm jealous of God's favor on him. <laughs> I don't think anybody has ever done anything like that. Like. Ever. That that seems like something that you just made up. 
and uh, they literally just try and destroy me and hurt me, backstab me. It comes from envy. It comes from a jealousy of a spiritual anointing and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that's at all what happened. Um, another element to this story, if you are uh, anointed and, and favored. Now, uh, one thing that Jacob did that he probably shouldn't have done is he paraded himself out there with the coat. It's almost as if he was like, hey, 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 showing it off. Okay. His gift was not the coat. His gift was the ability to be able to interpret dreams. Apparently, your anointment isn't the ability to comprehend scripture. Be very humble. If God has gifted you, you must be humble. Your spiritual gifting is not something to brag and boast about. Says the man who is just boasting about his spiritual anointment. Okay, spiritual gifting is bestowed upon the spirit and it's really God's working and we, we don't take any, there's no glory for us, okay? We're vessels and, um, right? So be very careful that your spiritual gifting and, and that will not puff you up with pride because that, that can typically happen. And um, brothers, you know, don't get jealous to one another. If Hey, listen, I, I don't, I'm not like that. If I see a bro and he's super anointed, like my bro Stephen Bankars, I honestly think he's going to do 10 times more than I've ever done for Jesus. And I'm proud of him. I'm happy. I don't envy him. I don't want to hurt him or throw him under the bus. Uh, I see that the, the, the kid is, the brother, sorry, the brother is, is insanely gifted. And I encourage that and I'm happy for that. Cool story, bro. But your face has a different story. Your face says that you're incredibly envious of him. And if he ever does anything wrong, you seem like you'd be the first person to throw him under the bus. And uh, if you look at me and, and you're like, hey, man, that brother Mario, he's gifted. God's anointed him and he seems to be highly favored. Encourage that. Don't, don't hate on that. Okay. Jealousy and envy for spiritual gifting because God has favored someone over us is stupid. Okay. And it's childish. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to have that issue. Now, I cut a lot out because he just was rehashing what he's already said. But let's see what he thinks the story of Joseph in the Coat of Many Colors is about. But they betrayed their brother, and they told Jacob the father that he was dead, that he got killed by a lion. And nope. This is the Middle East we're talking about. I don't think they have a big lion problem. And they set up this whole thing and God had him go to Egypt and uh, Joseph ended up a slave and in prison. Oh, you forgot some of the best parts. Like the part where they were going to kill him, but one brother had a problem with that. So they threw him in a pit instead. Then when that brother left, they sold him to some merchants that were coming by. And that's how he went into Egypt as a slave. And so his master's wife tried to get at him because, I mean, let's face it, all women, they're evil. Am I right? And so he didn't want that. So she lied and said he was trying to get at her. And that's how he ended up in jail. But he was obedient and he was faithful and God's purposes were completed in all of that. Even in that, what the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good. Maybe it was implied or I just didn't read it right. But not once did he ever say anything about God or that he was going to remain faithful. And uh, he ended up being second in command in Egypt fulfilling the prophecy and God's purpose and plan. What prophecy did he exactly fulfill? You mean the dreams that he interpreted? Yeah, that seems legit. Well, any last words, Mario? We're one of his favorites! Woo! Sure you are, big guy. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Like, subscribe, stay frustrated. They say I'm cocky, and I say what it ain't bragging, motherfucker, rip it back it up.